Caldera's user interface is run as a web app. Before accessing any of Caldera's features, we have to log into the user interface. After entering our credentials, we're taken to the splash page for this fresh Caldera install. For Caldera to operate on a network of hosts, we first need to have those hosts connect to the Caldera server by installing the Caldera agent service on them. We can see a list of our connected agents by navigating to the debug menu at the top and then selecting Connected Agents. And we can also test our connectivity to these agents by going back to the debug menu and choosing Send Command, then selecting an agent and then typing some shell commands into the Execute a Command page. If the agents are connected and working properly, you'll get responses, as we see here. Now we'll create a Caldera network by going to the Networks drop-down menu and selecting View Network, and then clicking the plus button. We'll enter a name for the network. In this example, the mountainpeak.com domain is what we're testing, so we name it mountainpeak.com. We can then select the hosts we'd like to add to the new network. For this example, we'll just select all. The following page gives us visual confirmation of the hosts we've added, along with their status and the ability to add new hosts. Now let's run a quick operation on this network by going to the Threat drop-down menu and then Create Adversary. All we need to do is give our adversary profile a name, in this example, Test Adversary, and then select the techniques we'd like to run on the network. This profile represents behavior available to Caldera as it is performing an operation. Using these techniques, Caldera will be able to discover new information about the network and perform actions like dumping credentials, moving files, and lateral movement to gain access to additional systems. After clicking Submit, we're given a confirmation page of our adversary profile. Our next step is to run the adversary profile on our network. To do this, we go to the Operations drop-down menu and then to Create Operation. We name our operation Test Operation and then select the adversary profile we'd like to use. In this case, we're selecting the test adversary we set up previously. We can select the network on which we'd like to run the test. Again, here we select our previously created network. Then we choose a host to start on, which will be Caldera's initial foothold on the network. Then we tell Caldera to initially start a remote access tool, running in the context of the active user on the host with the parent process of explorer.exe. Finally, you can tell Caldera to automatically clean up all the artifacts it creates while it is running its operations. But for this example, we'll turn that off. And now we'll start the operation. As you can see, the first thing Caldera did here was retrieve a list of all the computers in the domain. And then it's using Mimikatz to dump credentials from the host it started on. And now it's enumerating the administrators group for every other host on the domain. Once it has this information, Caldera is able to copy its remote access tool to the different computers execute itself on those computers, and then do some more enumeration on the computers it moves to. Eventually, Caldera will compromise the entire network when it finds paths to access all of the systems. Once Caldera is done, we can review in more detail what occurred on each one of the steps it took by clicking on it. For example, here Caldera ran some commands and the resulting output was the copying of a file. We can also see the output from any tools that were executed. For example, this is the output for Mimikatz. Now we have the option to finish the operation without cleaning up. But for this example, we'll clean up all our artifacts from the operation. By clicking this button, we'll remove everything listed under the Artifacts tab, including any implanted processes as well as any files generated. Now that you've seen Caldera run, it's good to see why it behaves the way it does. This is determined by what techniques are configured in each adversary profile. We can see a list of the different techniques implanted in Caldera so far by going to the Threat drop-down menu and choosing View Steps. And by clicking on Details for each technique, we can see how each of the steps logically relate to one another. We can also see how each of the implemented techniques relate to the MITRE ATT&CK matrix via the Threat drop-down menu. 
Attack is a knowledge base of adversary behavior based on public threat reporting that Caldera aligns to. Boxes in green show that there is a Caldera step that covers that specific attack technique. We can also control how Caldera names the different artifacts by going to the Threat drop-down menu and choosing Create Artifact List. For this example, we create a name that Caldera will use when it copies its remote access tool across the network. Then, when we create a new adversary, we can add any artifact lists we've made. In order to keep the attack information up to date, we can go into the Settings screen and click the Load Attack button. Finally, we can edit the scripts that are included in Caldera directly through the web interface by selecting Script Editor and saving any changes that we make.